Hello, y'all. Welcome to my stream, or YouTube uploading, if you're watching this early. That's that's probably where you're from. Today is an out-of-norm stream, because I'm going to be making a website for a little package of mine, and I don't normally do that, or do streams on weekends. So this is going to be fun. I see I got a couple of viewers. Hey, everyone. So, let me just pin to the chat what package it is. Whew, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm working on. Car Social, you're here right on time. Thanks for coming. How's it going? Also, hi. Uh, oh, man. I've already, like, screwed up my shoulder today. This is not a good sign. Ooh. Regular reminder to the viewers. Drink lots of water. I'm already two thirds of the way through. Three quarters? Four fifths of the way through my big old jug. A calm weekend is a good weekend. Don't ask me. All right. Oh, you had a you you want a little viral? Of what happened there? Where is this news tweet? I used to have a nice little extension that would show me like the top tweets. Oh, okay. Well, I used to have, uh, I think that extension disappeared long before today. I don't know what happened. Anyway, cool. So, uh, the package I'm working on is Tide Lift Me Up. I'm just gonna go over uh, Oh, right, you, you have this, this whole situation. Right, right, right. Yeah, this is amusing. I'm amused. <laughs> I do wonder what React 19 will look like. Learner, hello! How's it going? Um, so, yeah, this... Uh... Oh, yeah, happy Father's Day. I still have to call the fathers in my life. Uh, <laughs> I plan on doing that after after this after this stream. Oh, there's the stream elements message. Good stuff. All right. So yeah, NPX title lift me up. Uh, if any any of y'all on NPM and think you have packages that might be used by anyone else, let me know and I can run this on you. But yeah, the point of title lift me up is to search for packages of yours that could be funded with title lift. Excuse me. For for those who haven't used it before, title lift is a pretty cool service. It uh does a few things around open source folks but i'm Dan. hello welcome uh we were just talking i Dan is uh the creator creator right of uh note emoji fun fun little package used by what is it a million downloads a week 1.1 million good stuff uh yeah i recently joined on as a a new like junior maintainer for note emoji and i Dan just walked me through the release process, so that was fun. By the way, fun fact, Node Emoji is now written in TypeScript and exports uh, type definitions. So, yay. Learner, absolutely, I'd love to have you contribute. In fact, on uh, Tie Lift Me Up, I've got three good first issues. Um, one, this one, the, here, let me copy and paste that. Uh, this one has a reference, well, the URL got weird. Yeah, let me fix up that URL. Has a reference to a different EPRO of mine that had the exact same bug and had to do a fix. So if you want, that that might be a good first one. But honestly, all three of these are good. Yeah, fun fact. Sindra Sorhas has... Let's just look at the amount of revenue on packages that Sindra... Someone correct me if I'm pronouncing that name wrong. I always feel bad. Um... Here we go. So just keep in mind that, um, ugh, open a new window, that um, just because this that someone's name is on a package uh, doesn't mean that they, uh, <laughs> that they are the person who would receive revenue. Like a lot of people are on multiple uh, packages. But here, let me, I'm just gonna remove these. All right, so, <laughs> Oops, gotta remove the 
slash mo also. So yes, almost $10,000 a month for packages that are owned or co-owned or at least referenced by name, Cindrosaurus. Uh, so I think that's cool. And great question, Parasocial, aka Jay Larky. What does this package do? So code, tide lift me up. Um, I'll tell you verbally and then walk through the code a little bit because I think it's cute. Uh, basically, it does two things. It searches on NPM for all the packages associated with the user. And then for each of those packages, it checks whether Tidelift says that those packages are eligible for income. And oh my god, I just realized I got distraction distracted and never actually said what Tidelift does. Tidelift, among other things, lets companies pay them a lump sum of money that is then distributed amongst the open source dependencies of that company or project which is really nice. This is a really good service. I I really like that they do this. Uh, <laughs> on TypeScript that's Lint, for example, we receive about $425 a month from Tidelift. So 425 times 12 is a little over 5,000 a year. Um, they get money by companies that pay them. And uh, the reason why they can convince companies to do this, in addition to the good moral you know, concerns, is that... Um, in order to be lifted, in order for a package to receive funding, it has to have some like good security oriented guarantees, like active maintenance, ability to receive security reports, ability to patch for security and so on and so forth. So I think it's a really good idea. Um, I'm not paid by them or any, correction, I, I am not paid by them to promote them. I'm like a lifted person, but I'm not, they, they didn't, I, they're not in contact with me. I'm not a intentionally paid shill, so. Do any of my pack, what is your NPM username? Also, oh, Chrissy, hi, CBIT2, welcome. Um, do any of your packages qualify? Yeah, so in theory, this can uh, me up, take in any username, let's see. Username jlarky. I don't know actually if it's case sensitive. jlarky. Nope, sorry. Womp womp. Uh, but hey, keep working on those packages and one of these days. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Anyway, the way the tide lift me up works on the inside is fairly straightforward for a node package. Um, I use the node util parse args function, which uh, receives the arguments you pass and then says that you can specify multiple uh, types of ownership if you want, like whether the person's a maintainer or a publisher um, how to report, so JSON or text. Since, so uh, how recently the package needs to have been published. Like I, I don't want it to look for packages that are like 10 years old. And then the username to look for. Anyway, once we parse all those things, we then run the actual tie lift me up function, which um, retrieves all the user's packages, uh, filters for ones relevant to the type of ownership and their username. Um, and then once we get the user packages, which is just an array of package data from this cute little NPM user packages utility that I found on NPM, we run get package estimates, which um, sends a single request to the Tidelift API, which is by the way, I think undocumented, but it just happens to work. Uh, I got it from, they actually have their own search, but um, it's, it's, one package at a time. And in theory, their search can uh, can be used for for what this package does. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it just searches for your packages on that pack commander. It doesn't filter on whether Tidelift eligibility is there. So that's unfortunate. Anyway, if you just look at the network request on the page and then look for, uh, let's say estimate, refresh the page, you get this bulk estimates thing. And I, that gives back an array of things. So yeah, all this, all my package does, all Tide Lift Me Up does is search for your package with NPM and then pipe that into Tide Lift's API. Cool. And then anyway, we have two reporters. So like JSON reporter, which um, literally just console log JSON to stringify, and then text reporter, which is a little little bit more, but it's still one function, 30 lines total. Uh, for each of the estimates, 
format its currency using the fancy fancy new until dot number format. If it's lifted, log, it's already lifted. And then if it's not lifted, say, hey, it's not yet, but it is estimated. Cool. So that's how we get these nice things. Uh, let's look at, who's another person? LJ Harb. Trojan Harban. That's like another name on a lot of packages person. We can see that Jordan has a pretty good amount of packages. So let's, uh, let's just pipe that into a, uh, <laughs> into another Google sheet. And some A one A. Jordan gets five. Jordan could in theory, Jordan's the packages that are associated with LJ Harb are in theory capable of earning about $5,000 a month total. Could we have an enhancement to make it local currency instead of USD? Yes, absolutely. That's a great idea. Um, I would, I would love that. Uh, file if you don't mind filing an issue, and I I can just copy and paste this uh, form if you want. Boop. That that's a good idea. I will say that I don't know that the Tidelift API does or does not support uh, that. Let's see. I, I still don't know if this API is documented. Uh, their estimated money is, yeah, they just say it in dollars. So you might, I mean, I, I would encourage you to file the issue just for tracking. Like it's good to have a public record of what we're talking about. And then we can always, uh, I'd say convert the money to, convert the money to local currency, but mm, then we'd have to do an API call to see the conversion rate. So that's a whole thing. So, yeah. I also don't know if Tidelift is able to, um, to send reimbursements in currency other than dollars. I've never looked into it. Um, I'm not saying they do or don't. They just, I see that they've always defaulted to dollars. I would presume USD. Good question though. Anyway. So the one big flaw with my package here is that it is a command line app and I want to make a website for it. Woo. So let's do that. Um, the website I want to make is going to be a Next.js app because I really like Next.js and I've been wanting to play around with the after stuff more. They recently redid how you lay out your pages to be all new and fancy and nice. Graham, you could do the AK. Hello. You could do the API call once a day on a cron and use that to show local currencies. Doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. I also wonder, like, do I want to go through the effort? <laughs> I already sold my soul to next. What is, uh, what is app starter? Uh, is the react thing? What's uh what what is this app starter? I will say though that um my personal site, which is I once I figure out a design for this that I like, I don't like how this works like pers like in um light mode versus dark mode. Prefers dark. Like I don't like how this this looks. Uh once I figure out a design I like, my personal site is gonna go live and this is actually built on Astro with solid. Now it is hosted on Vercel, but you know, that's because their hosting is the best I've ever found uh, in this year. And then the Philly JS site that I we actually um, <coughs> post these links. So, and then also the Philly JS site that I, I designed and built is uh, Remix. So I will say that I have used all, all the fancy, many of the fancy schmancy frameworks that people are recommending these days. I think solid start is probably the only big name. I don't remember using my, my blog is in Gatsby, but I, I don't consider Gatsby to be a, a real contender these days. It seems to, so, um, anyway, uh, I've only used app router in like little toy projects and I want to actually use it now. So let's get started. I want it. Okay. Installation. I, it says NPX, but I use PNPX create next app at latest. 
because I use PNPN. And that's, nope, all right. NPX create next app latest. Oh, is it is, is it like PNPX create next app at latest? Is that? Nope, nah, yeah, screw it. I'm just gonna run their command. Solid start isn't stable. Well, there you go. All right. Oh, and responded to Abedan. Okay, I guess it's USD only. About name. I don't, uh, I should have thought about this ahead of time. What do we call this thing? Tide lift me up site. What do, uh, what do we, what do we, hmm. Hmm. We can always rename this later. Up site. I would like to use, I do like want to get a little more space my terminal Let's zoom. Uh, I'm gonna have to zoom out I do want to use TypeScript I do want to use ESLint I don't want Tailwind please no commentary I do want the source directory I do want the app router what is the import alias yeah I want to customize it but I want to use star or squiggly whatever because at is confusing to me i don't like it when people do import aliases where they alias at slash to be in their local um package because at slash is how org scoped packages and npm are aliased so like why are you introducing ambiguity does not make sense to me um like i would always i i don't see a reason why you would choose an at slash over like a squiggly slash given that at slash is ambiguous um yeah don't they use squiggly usually i don't know maybe i'm just ranting about something where that's the default and then they just like assume that if someone wants to override that might be the biggest and most common thing but hey you never know either way <laughs> either way i'm happy um yeah glad we're on the same team on that all right, so first thing I'm going to do is to heck with you package JSON. Uh, I'm going to pm pm i. Oop, and our node modules pm pm i. I really like pm pm, and I now you're going to hear about it. So pm pm is one of the three most common package managers in the node ecosystem today, which is npm comes with node, yarn, which is like the first major popular alternative to npm that still was like the npm style of using package JSON and so on, and then pm pm which fun fact is about as old as yarn, but has only really started to, to take off recently in, in open source. What just happened with that name right there? Um, oh, is Bun its own package manager? To me, Bun is like its own separate, a blood urea nitrogen. Great job, Google. Uh, yeah, Bun is like an all-in-one thing like Rome, but yeah, <laughs> like Rome, but still being developed. And I don't even know what's happening with Rome. Maybe it still is, I don't know. Um, very excited about Rome. I see not a lot of people talking about it anymore. Oh, cool. Bun install. All right. So yeah, fun fact, a lot of people like PMPM. I like it because it, uh, sim links or hard links or whatever technical term it is, your packages so that there's one global installation of all your packages, which means it's real fast. So it's like, if I RM RF node modules here and then time PM, PM install. Look at all these reused packages. It didn't download anything, which means it's great for working on airplanes, which I do a lot, and it finishes under under three seconds. Cool. All right, so npm dev, typical Next.js web app. And voila, awesome. Source app page TSX, awesome. So I'm gonna, just uh, remove, let's see, I don't I don't want the style. I'm gonna redo my own styles with my own crap. So get rid of these. Uh, let's get rid of all these contents. I don't wanna run any of that. Hello world. And no styles, not using next image. Great, look at this. Uh, we got globals. I don't want any of these things. So here we go. 
to move this this custom styling. It's nice default styles, nothing against them. It's just not what I'm gonna use for this project. I don't need a gradient. Uh, HTML colors can be dark, yeah. So they're just, these are some nice default styles just to like remove like weird browser behaviors. All right, cool. So this is Next.js after I'm gonna at all get commit and uh, clear out default Next.js styles and content. Actually, was there an image public for cell for next? Are these referenced anywhere? For cell.svg. Yeah, I'm just gonna make a commit to clear out these these things that I don't actually want. Okay, so I can get rid of this stuff. Right. Get at all, get commit m, and I want to make a new repo. GitHub.new. Fun fact, GitHub.new is a nice little shortcut for making a new repository on GitHub. All right, Joshua K. Goldberg, Tide Lift Me Up Site. I'm surprised none of you people have suggested a nicer name than Tide Lift Me Up Site. Let's get, let's get like a pun or something. Website for the Tide Lift Me Up CLI. You're getting used to the, oh, love the GitHub CLI. Let me just cli.github.com, so useful. GHPR checkout is one of the top five commands I run in my terminal, I think. <laughs> I, um, I don't think I'm gonna want code code. Oh, it looks like these are auto-installed because that's how I set my crap up. Okay, gh repo new, oh, eh, next time. Git push u origin, gh repo create new, either way. Git remote add origin. Here, I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit. Sorry. Git push u origin. There. All right. I looked me up site. Gonna push this onto the chat, and I'm gonna um, repo here. Put this on all those social media platforms that I spam with my crap. No, I've been coming to like Blue Sky. It's nice. Oh, did I forget to post that I'm... Nope, nope, it's right here. Oop. And... Oh, yeah, fun fact. John Oliver drama on Reddit. So funny. So funny. I love John Oliver so much. He's going to love this. All right. Uh, boop. Cool. Now I can close the social media. Didn't everyone leave it? I <laughs> everyone except people who are posting cute, hot photos of John Oliver. All right, so here's an annoyance from me. Uh, Next.js discussion. By default, create next app does not enable the type should be a slint recommended rule sets. I'm sorry, did I call something crap? What did I, what did I call crap of mine? I appreciate your positivity. I didn't mean to insult anything I did. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so by default, the uh, create me next app thing doesn't um, doesn't create like a, the default, sorry, it doesn't enable the default uh, TypeScript BSL recommended rules, which is really unfortunate. So what I do next is um, I just like go go through the type of BSLint docs and copy and paste our starter. Um, let's see here. Boop, boop, boop. And they they do have a good rule set, next slash core web vitals. So I'm gonna plop that here. There we go. And I don't know why they don't include next as a plugin. But yeah, so this little discussion has been open for quite some time, 20 approach, 22 thumbs ups, which I guess is not that much for the Next.js discussion board. Uh, but for reference, the Remix team, and this is intentional shade for my ends because they should you know, pay more attention to their tooling. Uh, the Remix team actually was great about this. Um, Matt Brophy, and, who is on the Remix team, and then um, what's Michael De 
I don't know how to say his last name or Michael seems to be like a con consultant or a member of remix or something. They like hopped on it and like fixed the remix configs to extend from our recommended ones. So a little annoyed, but anyway, uh, the result is if you run lint, uh, oops, I forgot to install TypeScript VS lint. So can you my TypeScript VS lint, VS lint plugin. TypeScript ESLint parser dash D. Fail to load plugin. I ESLint plugin next dash D. Love me linting. Oh my god. What? See that? I guess. Uh, Yes, next linter, you have to you have to run just through next lint. Weird. Anyway. Uh yeah, fun fact, we're blocked from officially supporting TypeScript VU 513 in TypeScript ES lint. Uh you can there's unofficial support works fine. Like there's nothing actually stopping you from using us. But uh, uh where is it? Uh <laughs> we it's just there's a an out of memory issue um in oh here it is in um in typescript 5.1 that isn't fixed yet that means that when we run our tests on it uh it, it out of memory is our tests so uh whatever <laughs> they're working on it anyway linting setup oh actually i wanted to to do eventually enable JSX accessibility, uh, et cetera, and take. So I have my whole template TypeScript node package that I know many of you have watched me set up and work on. <laughs> uh, but for now, I'm gonna just just to do. <laughs> it's got a lot of more lint rules in there. Anyway, let's start actually working on this thing. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to um, set up initial Next.js app, set up initial linting, uh, set, um, add proof of concepts tied lift me up usage in clients, uh, fill out usage with options supports and then style nicely. That's going to be what I'm uh, going to do to do this. Those are the things to do in order. So first proof of concept tied lift me up. So the package is tied lift me up. Going to add it. Tied lift me up. And let's see, it's got a node API. So let's copy and paste this. Now I know I could use um, like tan stack query or something. I might want to, but for now I'm just gonna use like, I don't know, basic use effects, use state and stuff. What's my thought on the ESLint setup in T3? I haven't looked at it closely recently. In fact, I actually have a to-do now that TypeScript ESLint v6 is almost ready for release to try out TypeScript ESLint v6 on T3 and other community repos. But I, I remember taking a look at it and thinking it's pretty nice. Uh, do you have any other, if you have like particular things on it, I'd love to know. All right, so just as a client effect, um, tied lift me up with the default settings, then um, package estimates, got package estimates and I want to log them and also set results package estimates and then also let's catch error, error. Oh, give that error no. do you still have oh no well if you want to file an issue on the project let me know set result Let's just call this an unknown and set result error. And in my result, I'm going to json.stringify results null for. Uh, 
And yay, Lurder, I'm glad that you're uh, you're learning reaction next. They're awesome. Anonymous Gifter just gave me a tier one sub. Thank you, Anonymous Gifter. I really appreciate that. Uh, I, I truly do. And if you want to DM me anonymously or otherwise uh, with any way I can thank you more concretely, let me know. I'm work. I'm importing a component that needs used states. It only works in a client component, but none of its parents are marked with used clients, so they are server components by default. Great. So this is a new thing. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna extract this to a. Ah, uh... <sighs> this is fun. All right. So source app. I'm gonna. Someone yell at me if this isn't the right thing to do, but like. Um main display tsx i'm just going to make a new component for this stuff i don't want to deal with these shenanigans export function main display All right. if results instance of error return div oh no results <laughs> otherwise return yay results just complaining about result dot to dot stack and, I, boop, boop, boop. and I'm just gonna let me display here don't need this effect don't need these imports so do I where do I put the use client is it here display use here <sighs> Ignore that. Right. React use client. Where do where do you put the use client? So you put it at the top of the file. My formatter added parentheses. That's funny. First like. Heck yes. Thank you. All right. Looks like can't find electron. Who who is requiring electron? Got? What is this? NPM user packages. Oh my God, is NPM user packages requiring Electron or one of its dependencies? I really don't want to have to make this a server component and all that crap, but uh... <sighs> NPM user packages, why are you doing this to me? All right, screw it. I'm going to make this a... Uh... Ugh. Ugh. How can I get around this? So, uh, tied lift me up TS calls to NPM user packages to get the users NPM packages, which has what dependencies? It's like, look at my walk file. Dependencies got, what is this got package? What does this do? Oh, one of my friends. Not friends. One of my favorites, Syndrosaurus. Never met him in real life. It's an HTTP request library for Node. Ugh. Why are you using this though? Fetch, fetch, NPM user package hasn't been updated in six years. That's why. So got, and great. I mean, look at this, look at this library. This is 27 lines of code. I'm just gonna in, in tie lift me up. Uh, just, just do it myself. I could put it into an API endpoint, but I really want the client. This is actually something I, I meant to mention and, uh, oh, first line, that's what you meant, okay. This is something I meant to mention earlier, actually. Um, I want the client to be making the requests because um, I'm worried about uh, API request throttling, throttling and I wanna put that, Chore on the client. So, npm user packages.ts. Um, export function npm user, get npm user packages username string. This is an async function. So, let's just boop. based on this and then I also wanted to do a uh, file issue to replace got dependency with raw fetch would it be better to use fetch by the client directly yeah that's I think that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to change my tide lift me up package instead of relying on this npm user packages package 
to just um, call fetch directly. And oops, there we go. Um, results, let's call it results. And turn function loop. Results is, oh, I probably want to copy the type definition also, interface package data. Cool. Results is package data. Was it package data? Package data array. All right, so function loop and then return loop. Uh, fetch URL. So instead of JSON true, it's, what is it? Content type application slash JSON, something like this. Results dot push on fact. Next dot package. Then result.body, we can as response body. We can type here so that it's got a um, oh yeah, it's await results or dot JSON. Boop, boop. I'm gonna call that response for clarity. This is what I'm like coding, just muttering to myself. Okay. Uh, response body, which is results, which is the thing that it says package, package data, array of X. Okay, so const response equals await fetch, and then results.push, the result of that. So basically, okay, I see what this is doing now. So async function loop. Um, the, oh, I needed two headers, didn't I? So what they're doing is they're calling to the npm s.io, whatever, npms.io for a response uh, for whoever is a maintainer by that username. And then uh, then they get the response, push it to the results. And if the, uh, let's, let's, let's make this a response body here. <sighs> response body. So the response body has a total, that's greater than our offset. Oh, this should be let. Uh, and we loop again. So I'm just gonna make this a while true. There's no real need to else break. All right, response.dotty JSON ah, as response body. I should check response okay, I should to do check response. The original package doesn't though, so lol. Um, <laughs> guess I'm gonna not. But yeah, good to do. And just to make sure this is actually working, pmpm PM build dash w and then gonna node lib cli.js, make sure that it's still working. Yep, here we go. So yeah, this still works. So what I'm gonna do is pmpm link uh, global. So I'm gonna link this package globally. Learner, yeah, if you wanna, if you, I would, let's wait till the end of the stream. We, we might not actually end up wanting this. I might end up switching it to a XJS thing. But anyway, pmpm link, tide lift me up. G. so I've set up my local package for tide lift me up to be linked globally. And now I'm asking this site to use my global link. Um, and also just to be sure, um, I'm gonna add a console log. Hello, username, just just to make sure. Oops, and to run this, just making sure it logs hello. And it doesn't. Oh my God, cause I'm not actually calling my new thing instead of the old one. I'm smart. All right. Ha! Is it still requiring got? It is. Hello, Joshua. Yep, okay, still seems to work, at least 
somewhat well. So now if I um, can start my dev server, hopefully now if I visit the page, it won't try to resolve the electron. Can't resolve. Okay, it's still somewhere importing from the old package, so. All right. Uh, I don't need to fix up the tests to do, but I will get rid of npm user packages as a dependency here. So, aha, npm user packages. .js. So let's rename that file to get npm user packages because that's uh, that's what I actually call it. Here we go. And then, yep, yep. Okay. So no more of that old package. libclijs looks good. npm dev. Back at it. Cannot resolve, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's still using, ah, it's still using the old one. That's not good. Um, I don't wanna, res I, I'm like not, still kinda new to NPM, sorry, PMPM, so I don't really wanna muck around with it too much. What I'm just gonna do is copy and paste. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to replace the lib directory. Next has some kind of package cache. That would make sense. I'm also seeing though in my dot PNPM, uh, this exists. What, why is my finder not opening? There we go. Yeah, okay. Lib dash old, odal. And type with me up lib, copy, paste. Pim clean. Uh, pim pim next clean. npx next clean. Arm rf dot next is where it stores things. Close enough. All right, now we see, yeah, honestly, it's a good call. Uh, even if, even though I cleared the dot uh, pmpm module, it might just, Cannot resolve module FS. Get npm who am I? npm dash who am I? Oh my god. <laughs> Another package that has a hidden dependency on a, a node thing. All right, so um, npm dash who am I, which has a dependency on quitch, but I'm guessing that this package actually calls to FS on the inside or something. Another package that hasn't been updated in eight years. Which assert I... Okay, I mean, this is, this is another tiny little thing that I'm gonna just fix up locally. All right, so get NPM, who am I? What, you know what, I don't even need this. I don't even need this because um, I can just always pass in uh, Joshua Hedenberg. Hello. Close enough. Let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, clean these these fellas up. Lib delete. I do want to replace. Now I'm curious, oh my God. And then node util, I don't need that anymore. I don't need that. Writing isomorphic code is indeed difficult. Copy, paste, replace, PMP and dev. Sorry, what is DNT? Speaking of exercise, I'm already winded from this. Oh. Node comma util. Who is importing from node comma 
or node colon util. Ah, uh, the CLI. I don't even know why it would be doing anything. Nope. Maybe it's like not trimming out the exports or something. I don't know. Lib, lib, replace. Oh, Dino to node. Oh yeah, they're a whole new thing. Yeah, I haven't played with it. Aha! Uh -huh. Yay! Oh no. It's running. Failed to fetch. So that's cool. I'm getting a complaint. And I'm getting a cores complaint. Ugh. Fudge. Maybe I'll have to do this as a um uh, the next JS server component anyway. Uh, after all that. That's so annoying. Yep, yeah, all right. <sighs> Next components it is. <laughs> this is this here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get this to work using like a server component or, or whatnot. Um oh hey Abidan, thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it. For six months, that's a long time. I, I respect and appreciate your commitment. Um, truly. I really do. But oh, here's what's gonna happen. Um, I'm going to write this using like a server component or whatever. So it's coming from the one server. I'm going to file an issue saying, hey, I should add in caching or something. Um, I'm going to forget about that issue. It's going to go viral because only projects I don't want to go viral do. And then I'm going to like, it's going to crash and everyone's going to hate me. And Ty Lift will like sue me or something. Hooray! Let's do that. All right. So I don't need how the fudge does one user server component. All right, uh, React server components. So that's a client component. Where's the, does that have a good, like what's the React docs page on uh, I don't know. Async requests const result equals awaits tied lift me up. Can I use an async function? Results that to string or JSON dot stringify results. See if this works. All right, all right. It's all coming back. Yeah, cool. Oh, I hate how gosh darn easy and convenient that was. That was obnoxious. <laughs> that was truly god awful how incredibly beautiful and seamless. Props to the React team and presumably Next.js folks for getting it to work. Oh my god. Oh, so nice. I have been here 48 minutes, 22 seconds. Three minutes of that was, was introduction. Well, like 20 minutes was futzing around with client crap. <sighs> <sighs> okay, cool. And I even like that they show the requests in the log. Yeah. yeah, there's been a lot of fear, uncertainty, doubt about um, RSCs, React Server Components, but truly they, they, they are an excellent way to do things. Like the fact that I can just do this declaratively and then, and then have it like super optimized for me is really nice. Um, so I think this, I'm just gonna delete that component. Uh, this satisfies the proof of concept. So, <laughs> right, what did I change in my package JSON? I had a title of me up, I had a title of me up. Give me, oh yeah. Oop. Git commit. Git commit m proof. Oh, right. Git add all, git commit m proof of concept for tie to lift me up. Great. All right. Oh, and uh, to do, don't you dare forget caching. Maybe end up using an API endpoint or whatnot. I don't know, I don't know. Lord, I really appreciate you hanging out. I know this is a difficult time for you. 
So I hope you have a great weekend too and you have a good good Father's Day. Bye. All right. What was I going to do again? I was going to do options. Ooh, options are interesting. Um, so the options that I could do are username, since, what are the options? I, I don't even remember. Username, since, I don't care about reporter, um, and ownership which is a string required um, since uh, date optional uh, defaults to two years ago. I guess I'll just choose market as optional and then ownership, which is optional, which is a uh, select, oh, excuse me. So, Here's all right, what I what I do by default. I'm just going to try it out. Is I'd make a new uh, components folder, make a new um, option in options inputs. I don't know what I really call this uh, function. Oops. Export function options inputs. Uh, turn div inputs type equals text. Um, label okay so id equals username this is just like really html4 username like really basic stuff probably getting something wrong with accessibility but at the time i'm just gonna yeah, fig figure that out later honestly to do probably use a pre-built library for forms something like that uh, dates type equals dates um Input and then ownership. Ownership. And this is actually not even input. This is a uh, select. How do you do? I don't even remember. It's been so long. HTML select multiple. Uh, I don't want stack overflow. I want MDN. Can you do multiple? You can have, ooh, opt group, that's cool. Selecting multiple options. There we go, yep, select multiple. Let's just see both side by side. Then option value equals, I don't remember what the options were. It was, uh, Author, maintainer, publisher. LMNLP, maintainer, publisher. Opt group and maybe just after. Huh. Let's see if this works. Let's see if uh, see if my nice little simple thing is, is happy. And this is a client component. So I've got a option inputs. Yeah, that that works for me. BBB, what did oh an auto select? <laughs> um I'm gonna give it initial does it have a default value of Joshua T. Goldberg just for funsies. There we go. Alright. So um this is gonna need props uh on username on change for uh let's see i'm gonna call each of them maybe value string void so on change username oh my god i just started typing in the wrong place okay interface options input props on change username on change date just gonna be a date and on change um ownership oh no that's not date it's since and since it is a new value of, hmm, I should export the uh, ownership type. Uh, package ownership form. <laughs> yeah, which is that thing. So 
to do export directly from tide lift me up. Hear me out, you can use, thanks for hanging out, Omni Dan. see you around. You can use regular forms in Now, Do you have a docs link for that parasocial? I'd love to see it. Oh, you're going to suggest just using like a form that I submit. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, form and then, yeah, let's just do on submit. Yep, yep, yep. That makes sense. Option, options, values, uh, request options, server actions. I'm slowly getting pulled in to the way they want us to use things. All right, cool. Form action equals. Ah, uh, yeah, let's, I'll just put this in here. This is fine. All right, let's get you. Thanks for the assist, by the way. All right, form action equals search. Function search. Cards. Um, all right, let's see what happens when I do that. Form action functions. Where did I? So this is explicitly a uh, use server thing here. There it is. Hey, next. Uh, experimental server actions. True. And it's restarting dev server, I presume. Not here. Well, it could be there. Okay. Let's just put use server everywhere. Server actions must be async functions. Well, I got to change. Ah. Fine, I'll read the docs. Okay, so boop, boop. It's in the function. So use server, uh, I'm going to return promise.resolve, happy, true, all right, so that, oh, that's cool. And do we log on the client? I would assume not, but we do log on the server, I would assume, do we log in? And, oh yeah, I need to submit the form. So button type equals submit. Where's my submit me? Okay, cool. So we got ours, which is form data. Awesome. So now let's look at data. Let's look at that data in the terminal. That's cool. Yeah, I'm seeing the chat on delay. I did figure out I didn't submit it on my own. <laughs> All right, let's get this terminal on its own. Okie dokie. So, um, data form, data form. Uh, my form data, I don't know what to call this. Data dot username, data dot since, data dot ownership. We live in 2005. Hi. And look at my multi select, I'm so proud of myself. All right. Ownership is a package ownership form. What a terrible name. Uh, since is dates and then username is string. And these are all optional except for, well, I guess since an ownership aren't optional, username is required. What are you complaining about? Uh, form data? What is action? 
Do not use or you'll be fired. Hey, they got a new one of these. Uh, key of do not use will be fired. What? What are these? I have to know. Form data. Okay, so it's a form data. Okay. Form data. Can I do like hi username data dot get? Yes, username. And if I submit, oh, now I'm seeing your chat. I should get better at a uh, at um. Why is oh. annoying? All right, submit me. Still no. Why are you doing this? Is it name? Am I missing the name? I think I am. Name equals username. Yep, there you go. Chrissy, welcome back. Name equals dates. Wait, oh, that's on the wrong thing. Name equals dates. Ownership. Name equals select or ownership. ID equals ownership. Alrighty, submit me. Yay, look at that. And then if I refresh and hit submit me, yep, 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 awesome. And <laughs> native forms, what? Const username equals data to get username or Joshua K. Goldberg, which I'm actually gonna extract to a constant in just the um, default name. Uh, so I don't have to retype it out. Um, const dates equals data dot get dates. Uh, I'm curious what the date's gonna come in as. Will it be typed date? And then const ownership equals data get ownership. I'm also curious about what that's gonna look like. So let's let's select some crap. Uh, wee, whatever. And maintainer and publisher submit me. Date is a string. That's fine. And ownership is. Why is ownership only one? Gets all. There it is. Chrissy, glad to see you working on the PR. That's awesome. Yep, there we go. Ownership is a string there. Cool. This makes me happy. All right. Um, server. Const results equals await oh, Tyler for me up. Username, date, ownership. I'm gonna be all fancy here. And actually move these over. What are you complaining about now? Username. It could be a file. <laughs> Let's make some assumptions. This is only ever gonna be a string. This is only ever gonna be a uh, form data. Oh God, what is it called? Package ownership form. There we go. As string or undefined. I, I made the, um, I made the Tylift API allowed since as date or number or string. So I keep calling it, I keep calling it date. It's not date, it's since. I'm gonna do a case sensitive rename. I'll just, since, since since, since. <laughs> yeah, it is cool that I can do all that. Like in theory, I could Zod enforce this and all this, but uh, so I can actually just like return await this. All right, that makes me happy. Result is not defined. Yep, because I don't have a result anymore. And let's check the article. How do I get the result back? Do, do, do. How do I get the result back? Finding J, blueberries. Welcome to the chat. That is forever gonna be the first message you have sent in my Twitch stream. Good stuff. All right. And uh so I feel like I'm gonna immediately get a React complaint, but result set result equals use states. 
you're not allowed to do this, right? Like you probably have to uh, set results. Like this is gonna complain in some way. Yeah, um, react server components, get data back to client. Why are there 15 docs? that aren't the React docs. Yeah, so I, I understand why, by the way, it like makes sense that you wouldn't be able to just like set state in a server component because it's a server component. Um, but, um, I wanna know like, is there a good way to get this data back to the client? Or should I just like make an API thingy in, um, in Next.js, an API route. So server components can fetch things, backend resources directly. Wait, here's an idea. Can you have a server component inside of a class component? I, I'm forgetting, I've like listened to like 15 podcasts describing this stuff. Um, all server components, right, and slots in the rendered result of server components, version of the server. Hey. You cannot import a server component into a client component. Oh, you got. Oh, I really like that. Redirecting the slash 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 my value black. All right. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm, I like that. I'm going to um, have the form on the client um, change. Yeah, change the URL so that we do actually, let me just paid scratch server component action .txt. just just to have that but then what i actually want to do is um <sighs> next js get query param where is it use there it is router yep that makes sense router router dot router dot <sighs> dot query excuse me parse URL query which is a record of string or string array router dot query and here we go boop, boop, boop. Actually, gonna extract this out so I can log it first. Data back again. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um. So. Next navigation. Ooh. All right. Navigation. Use router. Okay. So next slash navigation. I have to relearn all these things now. Slash, oh my god, use path. Okay, is it use query that I want? Use params, params equals use params, params of username, params of since, params of ownership. What type is params? Where is it? Params, which is string to string. All right. So forgetting ownership for a moment, let's just console log that data. Oh, lordy. <sighs> so that's not working. React server component gets query params. God, this is a pain. Oh, so the page receives it? So 
So that's nice. Um, action equals search. Oop. I'll just delete this stuff. I have it in. Uh, I have it in my scratch file. All right, so that's nice. So yeah, here we go. We're just getting it from the uh, JSON. That's, that's, that's string to buy that. Did. So like username equals LJ hard. Nope. What is params? Params is nothing. <sighs> Thank you. Oh, I have to use dynamic roots. Oh, I just want to get query or like a question mark, whatever. I don't want to use this. Uh, question mark. Ugh. I really don't want to add a query parameter to my file root. This is annoying. So let's just log all the other crap I get. Rest. Oh, it's data. Ha! Huh. Data. Wait, no. Search params. There we go. Okay. Search params. I was so offended for a moment. Param. I don't hear a Wisher fan. Pam, param. Yeah, there we go. Look at this. This is all of LJ Harb's stuff. And since equals 2000. Nice. And. Ah. <sighs> Um, what is this? Next, a uh, page props. App page. Does next not have its own page props? Hmm. Next TypeScript page props. App props? Does that mean it has page? Prop, nope. App prop types. This is underscore at, yes. <sighs> Does app props work? Yay. All right, well, page props to do. Surely there is a better place to import this from. <sighs> Love being on the cutting edge. Okay. All right, nice. Thanks for the. Uh, the assist on the redirect. Um, okay, cool. So uh, I can just delete this component because I end up not needing to get page graph server shenanigans. Form action equals search. Uh, okay. Um, submit. You know, I'm just going to do data, console log data. Let's see. Oh boy, getting a complaint here. Position four. Who's low? Unexpected non white space character. I'm just going to remove some of my extra console logs. Get that out of there. Oh boy. Oh boy. And I actually do need a component. <laughs> you can't do that. I see why people are so irritated about React server components making things harder. Like this is legitimately annoying. I'm like kind of <laughs> getting annoyed at all the things. Like the problem is in a way on my end that I just am doing things that are documented is not allowed. But the docs are super new and fresh and, and react.dev does not show up on Google. Uh, uh, oh. Options, inputs. Options, inputs. Screw it. Joshua Cable. I need a function, not a component in handle submit. Oh, did I? Handle submit. Wait, you can't inline? Why can't you inline this? What? On, oh, it's on submit, thank you. That's a garbage error message. That's truly garbage. 
someone will fix it. Okay. Wait. Cannot be passed to client component props. Did, did they mean server component props? Event handlers can't be passed to client proponent props. Did he, did... On submit equals on submit. Mm. That is on submit. Oh, where's my, what? Handle submit should be use server. Yeah, but I don't wanna use server it. I wanna, I'm just gonna use client in this friend. Yep. Bye. Uh, options, inputs. Oh wait, cause the, Data being typed or not is not actually blocking me. Um, I see what you're saying now. So use server, and then it must be async for some reason. Uh, handlers cannot. Like it's it's fine that this is untyped for now. Like that's not what's causing the issue. Was it on top? I feel like I remember it not being. Uh, event handlers cannot be passed to kind proponent props. Fuck it. Options, inputs. All right. Redirect. <sighs> All right, so, wait, no, I don't want that. God damn, this is so fucking annoying. These error messages are garbage. Uh, it's not telling me what I need to do. The docs are ass. This is like legitimately an annoying development experience. I'm gonna angry tweet about this right now. No, I'm not, I'm gonna be nice. <laughs> also, I have 12 minutes left before I gotta go do stuff with my friends and fam. <laughs> Next 13, eh, not productive, yeah. Okay, am I gonna have to read the goddamn docs again on this? I mean, the old Next, like pre-app, like page routing and stuff, pages, whatever it's called, that's fine. Like that stuff works in production. I've built production apps with that on teams that use it. It's just, this is like super new. And the problem with using super new stuff is that it's relatively undocumented. Stack overflow answers aren't fleshed out. Error messages aren't as good. All right, so what am I doing wrong? I have this on submit, which is inside the, it was that it was inside the goddamn function. Wow, okay. Submit me. Console log data. Okay, so is this like a remix style server action? Like it says, who's saying hello? Is my tide lift the one that's saying hello? Yeah, okay. Get npm user packages is calling, okay. Cannot wait for this to be, as you said, production ready. Okay, uh, don't leave my hand in the world anymore. Uh, so that's my data. Uh, Grams of since I'm just gonna say or undefined. That way it doesn't show up in the log. I mean, I understand why they wouldn't want to like go out and say this is remix, but or inspired by, but like w one of the things I love about the web dev community is that when someone has a good idea, that good idea tends to get used a bunch realizing I've been like slowly leaning away from the camera. Um, like it's good that Remix had good ideas around forms and now other frameworks are using them too. Similar to how Next.js popularized a lot of stuff um, like RSC more recently, that is like new age and starting to become more and more of 
Yeah. And I'm sure someone from like Astro is going to yell at me that no, Next.js wasn't the first for XYZ things, but like whatever. Everyone cre everyone mixes and matches stuff that existed previously. All right, so now I have to do the redirect. Um I've got my data being logged. Uh on submit throw new error what. So this is this just going to submit what the fuck? My window's not matched up. Why is it still giving me server actions require this option to be enabled? That's been someone. Someone <laughs> needs to fix that. <laughs> All right. Username Josh Goldberg. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, oh yeah, let's put the result there. And Dr. Gilbert two, submit me. What's the error? Of course, the, f oh my God. Hang on a second. I don't even, yeah, I, this is truly like the remix style forms. I don't need it on submit or any of that bull crap. I'm just gonna progressive web app, enhance it, whatever. Um, oh, I meant to do some that stringify result. Cool. User Joshi Kohlberg, submit. There we go. And I'm done. I'm not even gonna have a default username anymore. I'm just gonna go for uh, inputs required. Let's refresh. Why is oh wait Ty lift me up? Oh yeah. Data dot username must exist. All right. Why is the result still? Why would Danny Barab be upset? I'm assuming that's who you're. The distinction between MPA and SPA is is these days somewhat arbitrary and meaningless. I think I believe. Dan does not hate MPAs. That's fud. F U D. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Why is this page caching my results? I don't want. Oh my God! It's not. It's that I'm. I already had a username in there. Okay. Glad to hear, it, Chrissy. Learner, yay! I'm, I'm glad you. Uh, glad you learned. There we go. I was getting mad that it was showing results, but I had forgotten that Josh Rico was in the queer prep. Okay, so this works. Um, Search params. Now I'm just gonna JSON that stringify ownership. Um, well, I guess we have to import that again. Uh, data. Submit me. Ah, yeah, I'll I'll give the username a default value of Joshua K. Goldberg. Why not? Learner, I said, I'm, I'm glad you had a good time. Yay. Submit me. Okay, so ownership is actually good to go. This is good. Um, they patch <laughs> All right, so I think I've actually successfully, after a lot of swearing, um, gotten through to uh, what I was supposed to do. And the result was actually really nice. Like, as annoyed as I was by the god-awful experience that was trying to get this stupid thing to work, um, <laughs> the, the end result is actually really beautiful. Like, look, if this is pure declarative code. This is one of the things that drew me to React in the first place, that you're able to get such nice, succinct descriptions of this is your input, this is your state, these are your actions. And look at this. Like, I'm just, I'm awaiting the result of querying and logging that, and then I have a form that allows us to um, submit for a new value. Ah, oh, beautiful. Now, in theory, we could do like real-time updates with the form, but screw that, I don't have the, the energy. And yes, one could write the same code in Astro. But very few, if any, changes. All right, so I will say though, I, I do really like Next.js. Uh, yeah, write a passage. Um, I don't want to I don't want to meaninglessly bash 
um, Next.js or RSC or the React team or anything. Like, I think we should, because I've got five minutes left before I got to go, I'm going to rant. I think we should all take a step back and carefully think on and evaluate our emotional reactions to things like RSC and Next.js 13. The two things that I've seen a lot of in the dev community, especially on Twitter, that I do not like um, are A, spreading falsehoods or partial falsehoods or misinterpretations about the role of Next.js in React's ecosystem, and B, spreading falsehoods around um, the direction of React itself. Um, approaching those in order, you do not have to use Next.js to use React. Not today, not previously, not in the future. Next.js happens to be the first major, whatever, consumer, user, et cetera, of RSC that's receiving a lot of attention. But they've intentionally put a lot of effort into the architecture to make it so you can implement your own RSC so that other component frameworks can do it too. Um, so when I see people saying stuff like, I don't know, you have to use Next or RSC is built for Next. No, you don't have to use Next. Next was built, rebuilt really for RSC. Um, secondly, this is not like the Python 2 to Python 3 or Angular 1 Next to Angular 2 plus migrations. Um, there are some similarities in that um, the docs aren't great right now. Like there is development pain in migrating from old to new. That's unfortunate. I experienced that pain right now. But React is completely backwards compatible. We're talking like Microsoft levels of backwards compatibility. Like you can still use Create React class, an API that no one has wanted to touch in years with RSC. Uh, the problem is that there's this new paradigm that's added on top of the existing stuff that people think is a replacement, but it's not. It is an add-on, a better way of doing things that you can opt into if you'd like. And frameworks such as Next.js can encourage you to use this new way of doing things, but you can still do the old way. Even in Next.js 13 after, you can make everything a client component and make it an entire SPA, or you can make everything an MPA the way you did with Gatsby back in the day. There's, there's no reason to fear the new thing of React, to claim that, oh, we should all switch to Astro or Solid or whatever because React is forcing a thing. No, 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 no. If you want to switch to solid, astro, preact, whatever, sure, you do you. But react deprecating anything is not a valid reason to do so. That's not happening. All that being said, this was really annoying and I don't want to go through this again. So I'm probably not going to not gonna tackle another project that requires using Next.js 13 for another few months, waiting for this to get better. Quote, the React team is telling Vercel what to do. Love this. Yes, direct quote from the React team, from Dan Abramov. Yes. So. Anyway, I one more rant since I have a minute. I think that the directions that frameworks like Astro, Solid, Solid Start, um, Next.js, React Server Components, like frameworks, libraries, innovations, I think these directions are really exciting. We're learning better and better how to do things like client actions, server navigations and actions, and so on and so forth uh, over time. And we keep making new and better frameworks and versions of frameworks that take advantage of these learnings, like Remix, like Next.js 13. So it's really exciting. And I think our general vibe and move, mood in web dev should be excitement and joy that we're doing so much better. That like Parasocial in the chat said, like this doesn't even download JavaScript. Like this, this is, <laughs> this is like just a server action site. Like this is great. So, oh, I'm not mad. I'm just, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a little annoyed because every time something new comes out, people on Twitter poop all over it. And the one time we were supposed to poop all over something, which was crypto, half the people on Twitter got all excited about it. So anyway, this was fun. I'm, I'm only sad that I didn't get to uh, using vanilla extract. So I'm just going to plug that. This is what I'm going to do next time I have some time. Um, yeah, so I'm going to style my thing with with vanilla extract. Um, I happen to meet, I don't know how to say his last name, Mark. Da, oh, geez. Well, anyway, I forget his Twitter handle, but um, yeah, I happen to meet Mark, the one of the people who like made a lot of stuff around 
um, CSS styles and modules. So I'm really excited about using this. I think having like a type safe themed API is really good. Vanilla extract. No, I do not mean vanilla JS. Vanilla JS is a whole other thing. Vanilla extract is built on, oh my God, what are we, oh, what is it built on? It's been a long stream. What? Extract. Oh no, I was thinking of something else. Sparkles. What am I talking about? Sprinkles. There we go. This is what I was looking at too. Sprinkles. Yeah. Cool. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'll, I'll use this stuff next time. But I'm tired. This was a lot of fun. Thank you very much for the chat for helping me out, especially you, Power Social. You, you, you fixed a lot of my issues much faster than it would have taken me. So I appreciate it. Um, just because I'm wrapping up, I'm going to outro with just saying who I am. Hello, everyone. I'm Josh Goldberg. I'm a full-time independent open source developer in the TypeScript ecosystem. Um, I work on tooling in that ecosystem around mostly TypeScript ESLint, which is the tooling that lets you run ESLint and Pretty on your TypeScript code. So if you write anything like JavaScript or TypeScript, you probably use us and you definitely should. Um, I, I don't have a real job. I do this full time. Some people would take issue with me saying this isn't a real job, but uh, if y'all want to sponsor me, that would be wonderful. I rely on that to do my work. Anyway, uh, this was a lot of fun. You can reach me, Joshua K. Goldberg, on all the things. Let's see if my socials command works. There it is. Close enough. <laughs> oh, wait, I almost forgot. We got a raid. Is anyone streaming who I follow? I don't know who Coden Garden is. Uh, travel outdoors. I do not. I don't know what's happening, but we're going to rate them. So this was fun. Bye, everyone. Ugh. Now I have to do that awkward. Oh, Twitch bug. Okay. <laughs>